Welcome back to this video on um, animal cell structure. This is part two. So, so far I talked about the nucleus, which contains DNA. DNA is transcribed into mRNA. mRNA can go into the cytoplasm where it passes through a ribosome. Ribosomes translate mRNA and put, and as they translate it, they put together amino acids to make a completed protein. Um, sometimes, I should say a lot of times, ribosomes are found embedded on the endoplasmic reticulum, the series of membranes throughout the cell. And you can see that sometimes the mRNA gets translated right through the ribosome and into the ER, and then it gets transported and popped out the end of the ER into what's called a vesicle. And a vesicle is just any kind of a fat sac that transports things around a cell. And then that vesicle containing that completed protein will go through another organelle called the Golgi apparatus or Golgi body. And as it goes through these um, membranes, it will have either lipids or sugars or both added to it. If it gets a uh, sugar added to it, we call it a glycoprotein. Maybe we could, we could start with that. So we're just about done with our little recap. So you might end up at the end of this with something called a glycoprotein. Or you might end up with something at the end of this called a lipoprotein. So whenever you end add sugar to something, you call it a glyco and a fat, it would be called a lipoprotein. So there's also the smooth ER and it makes lipids for the cell synaptic vesicles. And another thing that we should say about the ER that might come up for you at some point, and it potentially could be both of these, but I'm just gonna put that it stores calcium. And that stored calcium is going to be really important for muscle contraction. So when you um, exercise or contract a muscle, then this structure right here, the smooth ER, lets calcium, so if this is calcium in here, calcium gets to rush out and cause muscle contraction. In fact, one other thing I might say while we're here, because this will come in handy later if you take anatomy and physiology, the smooth ER is what we call this in a generic cell, but in a skeletal muscle cell, we specifically call this, you're gonna laugh, it's called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So you see how instead of saying endoplasmic, they say sarcoplasmic. That word sarco means flesh. Okay, so um, anyway, so it has a specific name. I should say sarcoplasmic reticulum is specific to muscle cells. So it's really the same organelle, but it is spe doing specific jobs inside of muscle cells. Okay, so let's go back to our story here where we have this lovely protein that's getting formed. Now, after it's gotten uh, all of its stuff added to it, now it needs to be shipped out to its final destination. So I'm giving an example that may be it could end up as an identifying protein on the surface of the cell. So um, if we take those greens, let's say put an add on, these are the little sugars that are sticking on the end of our protein. And why don't we use um, green here for this part? So um, many proteins are um, ID tags and um, if you have an immune reaction to something it usually is to the protein on a surface of a cell and um, so I'm gonna make sure I have my AF lock on okay I don't know why I always have to do that over and over again. And then we call them antigens.
Okay, so this comes up so many times in your learning, understanding that an antigen is most likely the protein on a surface of a cell. So examples would be like if you've ever heard about your blood type. Your blood type is determined by which antigens you have on the surface of your red blood cell. If you've ever gotten a vaccine, then what you're doing is you're getting an injection that is a P is an antigen. It's a piece of a virus or a bacterial cell, and it allows your immune system to identify it. Um, if you've ever had an allergy, it means that your immune system is responding to antigens that maybe are on a piece of pollen or a piece of food or a medicine. So those are all good examples of how um, Proteins on the surface of cell, we can often just call them antigens, and they are involved in both your immune response to foreign things that come inside of you, but also just for the day-to-day -day normal stuff where this, this is a liver cell. It's saying, hey, I'm a liver cell. Leave me alone. I'm doing my job. I have my appropriate identification. Okay, another example of how where a protein might end up, I have here is a channel. We could probably... So this would be a channel protein. And that allows things to come in or out of a cell. So maybe sodium can come in, or maybe it's a potassium channel for potassium to leave. So these are some that we learn about in our basic science classes. So sodium, potassium, or maybe it's a glucose channel so that sugar can come into a cell. Lots of different channels, and those get made from the Golgi, and then they get shipped and they get stuck. They get like embedded in the membrane. So speaking of the cell membrane, let's take a look down here and label that. So I've used most of my colors, I think. Um, let's go ahead and go red. So let's see, we did red, orange, black, green, blue. I think I've done everything. So let's go back to blue again and label this as, this is like a little um, picture. How do you do these? Like, so this is a close-up of the cell membrane. So sometimes it's called the cell membrane and sometimes it's called the plasma membrane. And plant cells, they have another um, layer outside of this called a cell wall, and so do bacterial cells. But we don't. We just have this one layer. So uh, you, if you see cell membrane or plasma membrane, it's refer referring to this. And what it's made up of are, these are called phospholipids. So here's one phospholipid. It, I just did, there's a head and a tail. Actually here, this would be one, okay? Here's one phospholipid, and it has a head and that head is hydrophilic, meaning that it likes the water and the cytoplasm. See, that this is a watery environment inside and outside the cell, and the membrane itself is made up of these two layers. So this part right here likes the water and then these tails that are called fatty acid tails, they hate the water, they fear it. And these are hydrophobic. So they fear water. Because the word hydro means water in Greek and then phobic means fearing it. So see how they hide, like if this is the layer right here, then the fatty acid tails are hiding from the water, which is all around it on the inside and the outside of the cell. So we call this thing together the phospho, I'll use my blue again, the phospho lipid bilayer. And this would go all the way around the cell then. I'm just showing you one little snippet. So phospholipid, this each one of these is called a phospholipid. And a phospholipid has a hydrophilic head and, and hydrophobic tails. And then if there was a membrane channel, then it would just be like uh, interspersed between the next, um, like this would be all phospholipid bilayer and then you'd actually have a gap here so to allow things to either go in or out, right? Through the channel, 
Let me make it like this. And then more phospholipids here. So the cell membrane is what allows things to come in and out of the cell, and it also helps to maintain um, the uh, right amounts of salts and potassium and things like this. So now our next structure, let's go um, to purple again. We haven't used that in a little while. And get a purple highlighter. This is supposed to look like a little like a recycling can or something. And this structure is called a lysosome. And I show it to you because it's important to know what it does, that it contains enzymes that can break down old cell parts but also to teach you this root word because it comes up other times in your lessons. So this word lice literally means to break. So whenever you see the word lice in um, any kind of a science term, it means that something's getting broken down or recycled or changing its shape to something smaller. And then whenever you see some, remember we saw that up here, look, chromosome. So here's that word. Chromo means colored. This literally means colored bodies because when they could first see them under the microscope. But here, this root word some means body. So the word lysosome is basically a breaking body. And the lysosome contains enzymes So you can imagine that you don't want to have this thing open just in the old time, right? Because enzymes are special proteins that can destroy things and break them down. And it's all kinds of good things, right? Like digestive enzymes, that's good. But you do not want to have enzymes running willy-nilly around a cell. They would destroy your cell. So we have to keep them nicely contained inside of the lysosome, and then they get to come out and play to recycle old cell parts. That's their good job. Okay, so the next structure we're going to look at um, is where all of the power comes from for this. So... We'll go ahead and why don't we take a pink highlighter for the mitochondria. And notice that this structure, a couple things, it's really easy to identify if you're ever shown a drawing of a cell. It looks like a kidney bean. And it has uh, two layers to it, double membrane. Sometimes it's called the powerhouse of the cell. And singular, we usually say mitochondrion, but most people just say mitochondria, and I wouldn't worry about it. So this generates ATP energy for the cell. And then that energy is used to do all kinds of things like open and close a lysosome or move something through the Golgi or um, pump things in and out of the cell. So this is a, a form of cellular energy that can be used for all kinds of jobs and it can use different kinds of fuels. It can use the fuel sources um, such as uh, glucose, which uh, enters as um, acetyl-CoA, but so you can use glucose, you can use amino acids, you can use fatty acids, and you can use um, a small structure that most people have heard of, heard of at this point called ketones. So these are all fuel sources that can be run through the mitochondria and then out comes cellular energy called ATP. Okay, so we have covered most of the structures, and I just wanna remind you, as I'm gonna back off so that you can see the whole page. I've had a lot of requests for this so that people can see it when we're all done. I wanna remind you that this kind of a cell is a eukaryote, and that you would find these structures in animal cells, in plant cells, in um, fungi, in protists. 
uh, you would not find these structures in bacteria. In plant cells, you would find additional structures such as chloroplasts, and chloroplasts can use sunlight to hook together carbon molecules and make sugars for the plant so they can make their own food. So I'm gonna recap one more time through. The nucleus contains the DNA, and on chromosomes, there are genes that code for proteins. The process of transcription will take a little copy of a gene into, an, into a little single-stranded form called mRNA. The mRNA gets to leave the nucleus, and it will go through a ribosome to get translated into protein. And then that protein will go into the rough ER and get um, further folded and transported. And then it will get transported to another organelle called the Golgi, and it will tr get transported in a little fat sac called a vesicle. As it goes through the Golgi, it will have lipids and or sugars added to it, and we put little green on there for that, and then get transported to its final destination, which I gave you two big examples. One would be um, on the surface of the cell to kind of identify the cell, and we typically call these identifying factors antigens. Another job, which I guess we could put, maybe instead we could say it became a, a channel in the membrane, and then you could have sodium coming in here or potassium leaving, etc. cetera. Uh, when cell parts get old and worn out, they then enzymes in the lysosome can break down that old cell structure and recycle it. And where does all the energy come from this? Well, the mitochondria. The mitochondria is constantly pumping out the cellular form of energy that we call ATP, and it can use various fuel sources in order to get that ATP. Basically, all the nutrients that you eat can be channeled through the mitochondria in one form or another. And then all of this environment inside of the cell we call the cytoplasm. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.